One of the most useful features we have when working in InDesign is parent pages. Parent pages enables us to manage elements that can appear multiple times throughout a document and help with organization and time saving. Currently, applications like Illustrator don't offer parent pages. So this is why InDesign is so good when working on documents with multiple pages. Imagine having a document with over 100 pages and having to edit the page number on each page. What a nightmare. This is where parent pages comes in. So let's jump in and see how this works. So here I am in InDesign, and this is a classic document where parent pages come in immensely helpful. Here I have a document set up in a book format with over 120 pages. If we look down on each page, we can see we have these small footer elements here. We have the page numbers, a website address, and what appears to be a section title. Now these are all managed and applied using parent pages. In the last video, we looked closely at the pages panel. Now, if we look at the top of the panel, we see a row here. As well as managing our pages, we also manage our parent pages here in this panel. And in this example, we have multiple parent pages. Also, in this instance, the pages are set out as spreads instead of individual pages. This is because the document is set up in a book style using facing pages. Now, here is another example, but this time with multiple slides as single pages instead of spread. Looking in the pages panel, this time we can see the parent pages are set as single pages instead of spreads, like in the other document. More on this later. So back into my other document, each parent page or spread in this case has its own name and prefix. And if we look below, we can see which parent pages are applied as we can see a label on the top corners of the pages. So to access a parent page, we can simply double click on them Upon click, the parent page will open in its own work area, where we can see the contents. In this example, it's not a lot of content, but here we have elements that are repetitive throughout the document. So in the bottom left of the first page and the bottom right of the second page, we have a special character, and this is for the page number. Right now, this is set to A, but don't worry, we'll be getting into this shortly. On the bottom left of the right page, I have a website link, and over on the right next to the page number, I have a section. Now bear with me, you're gonna see what magic this is in a second. So if I now double click back onto a page in my pages panel, we will come out of the parent page and back into the document content. And if I click back to the document for page 45 and 46, we can see the elements are visible. Now, if for example, I come into the pages panel, click on page 45, press and hold shift and click on page 46 to select both, right click and click on apply parent pages, up will pop a menu. If I click the apply pages drop down and select none and click okay, we will see those elements have now disappeared. If I right click again and select apply parent pages, hit the drop down and select a dark elements, they will return. So in the pages panel, I'll click on page 43 and this time on page 44, we can see we have the same elements, but this time in white. So back up to the pages panel, we can see that we have another parent page spread called light elements. And when we click on this, we can see we have the same elements, but this time in white. Now, if we look closely at the pages panel, for page 43, we have the parent page A, dark elements applied. And for page 44, we have the parent page B, light elements applied. So for this spread of pages, we have two different parent pages applied to ensure the correct visual elements are applied dark on the left on white, and light for the right page to appear on a solid color background. Now, if I come back down to page 46, here we can see we have the correct page number, but we also have something else here. Here we have something that was not present in the parent page. This is what is referred to as a section. Now, if I scroll through my document, you will see this often changes for a new section. If we come into the pages panel and look carefully, we can see that as I scroll down, there will be these little triangles above various pages. These triangles represent sections, and if I double click on one of them, we will see some properties with the section marker name I have placed in previously. What this means is that whatever page comes after this section, the section marker will show the section marker details. As you see in my pages panel, I have a lot of pages and a lot of these sections. So after each section, each page will have a different section marker applied. This is really awesome when you are managing a large document like this, 
where you have lots of sections which you want to label and not do it manually on every page. In the parent page, I have one page section marker and each section marker on the document will change depending on how you section your document in the pages panel. So this is a brief overview of how parent pages work in InDesign. So let's now have a go at practicing how you can use parent pages in InDesign. So to demonstrate parent pages, I recommend opening up this document. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this class. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder two, practice files, and open the practice worksheets in design file. If we scroll down to the second page, we can see a variety of worksheets we are going to be using over the next few episodes. For this video, we are going to be looking at the parent page worksheet. So with the selection tool, I'll click on the parent page worksheet thumbnail. Now I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail and the worksheet will open up in its own tab. So this time I'll click on the practice document thumbnail. I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail and up will pop our practice document. Now for this document, I'm using the font base new. If you have not already downloaded all the fonts for this course, this is a free font that you can acquire online. To get this font, I would recommend you check out the course font page on the course PDF document. This is a list of all the fonts that are used in this class and where to get them. Simply click on the base new link and this will take you straight to where you can download it. Simply close the document, install the font, open it back up again and you should be able to follow along just fine. So this is a booklet document for a design expo. It's not as complex as the document I just demonstrated, but nonetheless, the principles are the same. Now, unlike the previous document that was set up using facing pages, where there was a front cover at the top and the back cover at the bottom, in this instance, the document is not set up using facing pages. Here, we are missing that single page leading at the top. Here, I have the cover and back page set as a spread at the top. Personally, when working on publications, I like to manage my cover and back page together at the top like this so I can see the seamless spread and then manage the internal pages below. So now if we come to page seven and eight in the document, we can see the bottom right, I have a page number. On the bottom right, I have a page number with an element that explains the subtitle of the document that I have placed in earlier and this little logo icon in the top right. Now, if we scroll through the rest of the document, we can see that this does not appear. So in this instance, I want to apply these elements to the rest of the document without having to paste them onto each page individually. And if we look up in the pages panel, right now we have the default parent page A in the parent page row. So let's see how we can do this. Now, when you create a document from scratch, you will always start with parent A. In this instance, we can see a double page spread. And if we look below, we can see A is applied to every page by looking at the top of the page thumbnails. Also, when you create a document from scratch, the first parent A will be applied to all pages by default unless you change them. So to begin, I'm going to click on the left default parent page, press and hold shift and click on the second to select them both, right click and select parent options. Upon click, you will get a pop-up. So in here, we can change these labels. For example, in here, we can change the prefix to one and I'll name the page spread and click OK. Now, if you look down on the page thumbnails, above we can see the number one because we just changed the prefix. So now I'm going to come back to page seven and eight, press and hold shift and click on the page number in the bottom left, the page number in the bottom right, the bit of text next to this, and the top logo icon graphic. With them all selected, I'll press Command X on Mac or Control X on PC to cut. Then in the pages panel, up in the parent pages, I'll double click on the parent page spread Next, I'm going to look over in the layers panel and make sure I'm about to paste on the type layer. In this instance, the type layer is on top. Then we can press Command plus Shift plus Alt plus V on Mac or Control plus Shift plus Alt plus V on PC to paste in place. And now we have the visual elements on the page. Notice that on page one and two, the page numbers both say one. This is because these are actually special characters for page numbers and currently state one because the, the page prefix is set to one. For example, if I click to select both parent pages in the panel, right click and click parent options and set the prefix back to A, you will see the pages are now set to A in the pages panel. Also now on the page thumbnail, we can see these are back to labeled A. 
In InDesign, if you come up to Type and scroll down to Insert Special Characters, you can come over to Markers and insert Current Page. This is a useful feature you can apply to parent pages, which will adapt to each page it is applied to in your document. So before we continue, there is one other thing we can do here. So down here next to the number, I have some texture, which I want to represent the section in the booklet. Right now, I have some text in here, but now we're going to do something different. So I'll come down to the text, click and drag over the text to select it, come up to Type, down to Insert Special Character, across to Marker, across and click on Section Marker. Upon click, we will see the text will change to Section. And that completes the elements in the parent page spread. Now, if we come and double click onto a page, we will now see that our elements now appear on every page. And we can see that the number is also correct for each page. Nice. But hang on, what about the section? Right now, this is set to blank because there is no section set. So to set a section, simply come into the Pages panel, click on a page to start. Here I'll click on page five, right click and click on Numbering and Section Options. Upon click, up will pop a menu. In the Content Marker, I'll simply type in Exploring Creative Possibilities. I leave all the other settings as they are and click OK. And now we can see a little triangle over page five. And if we look at the document in the footer, we will now see that Exploring Creative Possibilities is now present on every page after that section. Nice. However, I don't want this section to be applied to every other page of the document. Next, I'll come to page seven in the Pages panel. And just like before, I'll right click and click on Numbering and Section Options. The menu will appear. This time in the content marker, I'll type in Networking and Collaboration. I'll leave all the other settings as they are and click OK. And now we can see another little triangle over page seven. And if we look at the document in the footer, we will now see Networking and Collaboration present instead. So keep in mind when you apply a section, it will apply to every page thereafter. If you want to apply a different section after one section, you will need to add a new one. Now, I don't want these visual elements to be on the cover and back page. So in the Pages panel, I'll click page one, press and hold shift and click page two to select them both. I can right click, select apply parent pages, click the drop down and select none. And in the Pages panel, we can see that there is no parent page label on these pages. Easy. So that's how you can edit the parent page and apply them to your document. Now, there are a few other little tricks you should be aware of when using parent pages. For example, if we come and select page five and six in the pages panel, we can right click and select override all parent page items. Now, if we come into the pages, we can now click and select those elements which can now be edited or removed. Keep in mind that any changes will only occur on these pages alone. All elements will still remain in the parent page. So that's one way of overriding parent page elements. Another way is to select the element themselves individually. So this time, if we come to page seven and eight, if we only want to remove the top logo from this page, if we press and hold command plus shift on Mac or control plus shift on PC, and then click the item on the page, upon click, you will select the item and we can press delete to remove it. Again, it will still remain in the parent page, but it will now be gone from this page alone. Next, we could come down to the bottom Again, we can press and hold Command plus Shift on Mac or Control plus Shift on PC and then click the bottom right item. And this will select the type frame where we could, for example, come and change the color of the text. So keep in mind that when you apply a parent page, you can actually override the item if you so choose. And there could be some instances where you may want to do that. Now, if you change your mind and you want to return back to the original parent page, simply remove the changed items on the page, come to the Pages in the Pages panel, right click on the page, click on apply parent page, set it to none, then click OK, then right click again on the page, right click on apply parent page, select the parent page, click OK, and that will refresh the page. Easy. So that's parent pages, and one of the most important things you will need to know when working with pages in InDesign. If you're watching this video and using InDesign for the first time, I would recommend having a play around with parent pages. Open this document and have a go at applying the parent pages as demonstrated. Once you get your head around this, you will be perfectly set up to continue. So now we have a solid foundation of knowledge working with pages, which is pretty fundamental when working with InDesign. It's now time to take the next step. Over the past few episodes, 
I have showcased a variety of documents to show how InDesign works, but how do we go about setting up such documents? Well, in the next video, we are going to look at a variety of common documents you may want to create using InDesign and how you can go about setting them up. So see you in the next video.